The sun is both our friend and our enemy. It's like the ultimate nuclear frenemy. But how exactly would it attack us if it could, other than, you know, spiteful subtweets? Yeah, the huge. What up, solar babies? Trace and Julian here for DNews. The sun will straight up murder you if given a chance, but luckily it's millions of miles away. Of course, that doesn't stop it from shooting all kinds of radiation, millions of tons of superheated plasma, and charged subatomic particles our direction at millions of miles an hour. And some of that solar snot could really mess up life as we know it. We talked about space weather before. You can see its harmless behavior during the auroras created as charged particles hit the magnetic bubble generated by the spinning core of the Earth, which protects our planet. But if a CME, or coronal mass ejection, hits Earth, the results could be catastrophic. The sun is like a volcano, said Thomas Berger, director of the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. We can't predict when it's going to erupt, but we can see the signs building up. So let's say it does build up, and it shoots a storm our direction. What do we do then? Well, according to the White House's National Space Weather Action Plan from early November 2015, a big CME could affect electric power systems, satellites, aircraft, and spacecraft operations, telecommunications, position, navigation, and timing services, and other technologies and infrastructures that contribute to the nation's security and economic vitality. But how, Obama? How? When a geomagnetic storm hits the Earth, the electromagnetic energy from the solar wind causes geomagnetically induced currents, or GICs. Think of an electrical generator. When a turbine spins, a magnet moves under a wire, creating electricity. GICs are a geoelectric field, but the magnetic field is the size of the Earth, and the wires of our power grid play the part of the wire in the generator. And boom! we've created a giant electrical disaster. But it's not just wires on the ground. During solar storms, high-orbiting geosynchronous satellites can become electrically charged and short out, while low-orbiting satellites will begin to encounter increased air resistance as the atmosphere heats up and expands into their flight path which is not good. Right. In 1859, the Carrington event in the northeastern U.S. created aurora so bright people could read by the light of it. Aurora was reported as far south as Cuba and Honolulu. It was the largest solar storm ever recorded. This was pre-electric lights, but early telegraph systems were knocked out. Imagine if this hit now that we're so dependent on electricity. That's mind-boggling. If a Carrington-sized event were to hit the Earth today, it could overload the power grid, blacking out much more of the planet. But it would also kill television, GPS, and so on. During the solar storm, radio would be washed out by the high energy. We'd be literally and figuratively in the dark. In the aftermath, our satellites would be dead, and the power grid would be pretty much destroyed. Communications and power would be out for years, costing trillions of dollars. Years without electricity. This would cost 10 times more than any natural disaster ever. The National Space Weather Action Plan is a playbook the government can follow in the case of a large solar storm. The plan defines the dangerous levels of ionization and what we can do to keep space activities, aircraft, power stations, local governments, and so on safe. But all this relies on an ultra-cool early warning system. 932,000 miles from Earth at Lagrange Point 1, a gravitationally stable parking spot between us and the sun, is a satellite that NOAA calls a tsunami buoy. The Advanced Composition Explorer, ACE, was designed to give us early warning just in case the sun throws a CME at us. With this space buoy, we'll get 12 to 15 hours of warning, which is not a lot of time, but enough that, paired with a response plan, power grid managers could shut off the grid and the public could be warned. Sure, I mean, we'd be voluntarily blacking out a huge chunk of the planet, but that's better than hitting reset on the technological age, right? I don't think I could handle either. I freak out if the Wi-Fi goes down for like five minutes. Totally. I have this weird flaw of being attracted to things that will clearly kill me, and the sun is no different. Now, if you want to see some truly stunning footage NASA just released of our almighty fireball in the sky, check out Trace's video here. Elements like helium, hydrogen, and iron are found in the sun's atmosphere, or the corona, and each emits light at different wavelengths. Each color filter is a different heat level and wavelength, so scientists can look at the sun's layers and break them down. So, let's say the sun wipes out power and communication. Could you survive? Or would you be a hood ornament on a car driven by a crazed gang of pale dudes rampaging across a post-apocalyptic wasteland? Let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and we will see you next time on DNews.